Let's look at some model farms to understand how monocultures are more susceptible to crop failure. Here we have six farm fields. The first five farmers have monocultures. This means they are only growing a single crop. But farmer six has a polyculture. See how this farmer is growing a variety of crops with fewer numbers of plants per species. Now I'm going to place one stick of each color representing each plant species into this bag and randomly choose a color. What is the probability that I choose a yellow stick? There are one out of five choices, or one-fifth, or 20% chance. Each crop has an equal chance of getting chosen. Okay, let's choose a color. Whatever crop I choose represents a blight, which is a disease, or a mutant insect right wiping out that crop species this year. Ready? I got blue or the carrots. Now let's remove all the blue sticks from the fields. Do you see what happened? The fifth farmer who only planted blue crops had their entire field wiped out. Now they won't have anything to sell this year. The sixth farmer also was affected by the blight, but this farmer had four other crops that survived so the farmer can still make a living. Having diverse fields gave this farmer a buffer for when disease or insects hit hard. Let's do the experiment again. This time there are four choices of crops or 25% chance for each color to be chosen. I got the green stick or broccoli. Farmer three, who only planted a monoculture of green crops, now has their entire field destroyed by this blight. Farmer six was also affected, but because they have a polyculture, they have other crops to sell this season. This is just one of the reasons why organic polyculture farming is better for the people and for the environment. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching!